right now. And a good morning to you. It is Tuesday, January 23rd. Thanks for joining us. Uh, be careful out there. Again, not only do we have wet roads, but we also have a lot of fog. Yeah, so we've traded the cold for damp roads and, and fog, as you said, Steph. And uh, Mike Osterhey, just really not chilly out there at all this morning. No, I mean, kind of that dampish cool just because of all the moisture out there. But uh, yeah, the big thing that we have to watch out for is that fog. Temperature right now, 57 degrees. The normal low this time of year is 41. Normal high is 64. So yeah, we are much closer to, uh, to where we the normal high would be. And of course, when you have uh, those uh, two numbers, 57 in the bottom number, 2.56 neck and neck, no wind out there other ingredients that's what makes for some fog 65 for a high temperature later on today so we are going to be actually at or just a little bit above the normal high the aquifer huge jump yesterday 2.4 feet oh that is absolutely fantastic news and the allergens mold is low and mountain cedar is low want to go back to live cam right now just to show you now granted this camera is up there on the top of the building over there at 10 at 410 but boy it is pea soup and it's pea soup in a lot of spots right now, namely over there in Castorville. You head out 90, going to run into just a wall of fog. Everybody in the metropolitan area has some pretty thick fog. Pleasanton right now at four miles. Now, these numbers, of course, are going to be fluctuating and changing back and forth over the course of the next few hours, and everybody is seeing some fog out there with the exception of LaGrange Rock Springs also at zero visibility as of right now. So you definitely want to take it easy. Dense fog advisory up until 10 o'clock. So it is going to be on stubborn fog. Plus, we do have some showers out here. Uh, a few thunderstorms well up to the north, as you can see, and I think that's where most of the rain is going to be. Now, of course, with the ground saturated, any you know decent shower is going to just run off and not soak in. So you're uh, going to have to watch out for that. Some of the uh, you know usual low water spots. We will see more of this rain. This is going to start to taper off later on this afternoon, but then pick right back up again. Everybody's in the 50s out there right now. Even a couple of low 60s, 62 at noon, 65 for a high temperature. So again, things sort of kind of taper off a little bit as far as rain, but that's going to pick back up again then overnight. And we are looking at potentially some more heavy downpours tomorrow morning. I don't know if it's going to be an exact repeat of yesterday, but there's going to be a lot of rain out there and then even more throughout the day. Weekend looks fantastic. Those details coming up in just a couple of minutes. But first, you got to hit the roads. Traffic Authority, RJ, what's going on, sir? Yeah, Mike, and as you mentioned, it is all about the fog right now. As we take a look at TransGuide right now, check out these cameras behind me. We're looking there at 410 and Blanco Road. Visibility pretty low here, 410 and Babcock. We are seeing traffic obviously move through the area there. Check this out, 410 at Ingram North. I mean, all basically, you're just seeing headlights there in the distance. 281 at the quarry, same situation there as well. So we still have some lingering effects from that uh, that big rain that we saw over the past 24 hours or so. We still have a high water closure there, westbound lanes at Leon Creek. So remember uh, yesterday, the eastbound lanes were closed, and there was actually a stranded vehicle that we saw there uh, running onto the creek, so at least on the access road. So right now, we have the westbound lanes of 90 at Leon Creek closed for the moment. Just got off the phone with TransGuide a little while ago. They said that this uh, closure should stay in place there for a little while. So keep that in mind if you are about to head out on uh, 90 in both directions there. We do have a crash to let you know about right now. Eastbound I-10 at uh, Hildebrand. So it's going to be uh, not really causing too much of a delays right now, but something we're definitely going to continue to monitor as we make our way through the rest of our morning. The rest of the city, things looking pretty good. Still reports of water over some roadways, including 151 over there off of 410. Uh, so, but uh, again, no major closures or delays right now. 1604 Calebra also had a little bit of water over the roadway in those areas. But again, the big story right now, if you are headed out, just the fog is going to be something to definitely contend with. 410 at Blanco, you saw that camera look bit earlier. So we'll continue to get more looks here at TransGuide and give you more information when it becomes available. Mark and Stephanie, back to you guys. Thank you, RJ. Our top story this morning, a man suspected of shooting and killing eight people in suburban Chicago is dead this morning after he shot himself here in South Texas following a confrontation with law enforcement officers at a gas station in Natalia. Various law enforcement agencies say around 8.30 last night, Romeo Nance was found by U.S. Marshals near Natalia, southwest of San Antonio. The Medina County Sheriff says a standoff then occurred between Nance and law enforcement from multiple agencies at a gas station where Nance shot himself. I can tell you that the threat was suspect was neutralized. There's no threat to the community. The sheriff down there also says the Texas Rangers are taking the lead in the investigation. 
Police in Will County, Illinois and the city of Joliet previously said they did not know of a motive for the killings, but they said that Nance knew the victims. The San Antonio Police Officers Association is once again calling out the Bear County District Attorney's Office and DA Joe Gonzalez, this time for the way former officers are treated in court. Suppose asking for equal treatment for former police officers who are on trial. The police union referring to recent mistrials in cases involving former SAPD officers. The office of SAPOA President Danny Diaz releasing a statement calling out the DA saying in part, quote, from withholding crucial evidence to expert witness testimonies, these unlawful practices reflect a clear bias against San Antonio police officers who have been awaiting a fair trial for over a year, end quote. The Office of Joe Gonzalez responded to our request for comment saying, quote, our ultimate goal is to seek justice. It is critical that our office give opposing counsel all information they are entitled to. When for whatever reason that does not happen, we will disclose the error, end quote. Now to the New Hampshire primary where the first votes were cast overnight. It was not good news for former President Trump. He was swept by Nikki Haley. Six votes to none in tiny Dixville Notch, New Hampshire, which continued its tradition of casting its votes at midnight. But polls show Dixville Notch may not be a reliable indicator of how things will play out later today across the state as ABC. Midnight voting in Dixville Notch, New Hampshire, kicking off the first in the nation primary. The town following tradition and all six voters picking former South Carolina governor Nikki Haley as their Republican presidential nominee. Haley spent yesterday crisscrossing New Hampshire trying to convince voters to deliver her an upset victory. We can't be a country in disarray and have a world on fire and go through four more years of chaos because we won't survive it. Former President Trump's former rivals in the Republican primary have officially thrown their support behind him. Trump on stage last night, repeatedly interrupted by protesters. I was also honored. <laughs> She's back. As the She's former back. president accused Nikki Haley of courting Democrats, calling her unelectable. So if you want a losing candidate who puts America last vote for Nikki Haley. It's an uphill battle for Haley. Polls show her trailing by double digits. I love her, okay? She, she has a, the new, new style of what we need down in Washington, D.C. If they don't like him, I like him. So uh, I think he'll help out the country. Meanwhile, the New Hampshire Attorney General's office says it's investigating reports of an apparent robocall that used artificial intelligence to mimic President Biden, advising people in the state not to vote in the primary. The White House says the call was not recorded by the president. Today, Biden, Vice President Harris and their spouses are set to hold a rally together in Virginia to discuss abortion access. The primary in South Carolina, that's Haley's home state, is next month, but polls there already show Trump leading by more than 30 points. Melissa Adon, ABC News, Manchester, New Hampshire. Last night, Victor Winbenyama and the Spurs went to head to head with Joel Embiid and the Philadelphia 76ers for the first time this season. First quarter, Spurs come out fast. Wimby taking the ball himself, then he stops and pops a three. Spurs lead 12 5. Later on, Devin Vassell finds Wimby for the alley oop slam dunk. Too easy. More Wimby. He fakes the shot, then drives in for a two handed jam that many, not many basketball players can pull off. San Antonio led by as many as nine in the first half, but they trailed 62-58 at the half behind Embiid's 34 first half points. All right, let's jump to the third. Embiid delivers the knockout punch. Sixers pass the ball to their big guy. Embiid for the reverse layup off the glass. Timeout Spurs are trailed by 16. Then with less than 10 seconds to go in the 30, knocks down three of his 25 third quarter points. Joel Embiid finished with a franchise record 70 points topping Wilt Chamberlain by two. Joel went 24 of 41 from the floor and 21 for 23 from the free throw line and pulled down 18 boards. The Sixers win 133 123. Wemby had 33 points 
and seven rebounds. So it was a high scoring affair for those players. Spurs back home tomorrow night as they host the Oklahoma City Thunder at 8.30 p.m. at Frostbank Center. What a night. I know. <laughs> it was a little bit, uh, it was a lot. It was. It was a lot, go Spurs, go. Yes, go Spurs, go. Time now, 5.09 and 58 degrees. Apple releases its latest iOS software update just ahead how its new stolen device protection tool can help preserve your device. Winter is not over yet, and that means black eyes could still be a possibility soon. Up next, what you should do when you hit a patch of that ice. Yeah, it's it's a scary situation. I've, I have rarely seen it around here, but definitely when I lived out east, oh, it I'm will sure. surprise you. Okay, outside right now, this really does tell the picture right now. You're looking at a shot of the airport and 410 from our uh, foggy and misty live cam. Welcome back. It's 513. The recent ice storms across the country have covered roads with hard to see black ice, creating slick conditions for drivers. But there are ways to drive safely on those icy roads. ABC's Rihanna Alley has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, driving on black ice. Oh my God. Videos like these becoming a dangerous reality across the country as ice covers the road. More than 1,300 people in the U.S. die every year on snowy, slushy, or icy roads. More than 100,000 are injured. So what should you do when you hit a patch of ice? Our Matt Gutman teamed up with Team O'Neill Rally School in 2022 to learn how to drive on an icy road safely. So you don't want to break and turn. The car's not going to be able to handle it. So what you want to do is think about doing one of those things at a time. Break, then turn. I'm braking, but now I'm looking where I want to go, and I'm able to swerve out of the way. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll have more expert tips and the demonstration you need to see to stay safe on these slick roads. With your GMA First Look, I'm Rhiannon Alley, ABC News, New York. 514 and unbelievably 58 degrees. <laughs> Sorry, a big change from yesterday. Let's look out there with Transguide. Whoa, that's not Transguide. But there are uh, raindrops on our Transguide cameras. We'll be checking in with RJ Marquez very soon. Some people just know that the best rate for you is a rate based on you with Allstate. Not one based on Paul. You don't want to ride with Paul. Or Sarah. Not today, anyway. And you don't want a rate based on Ben. He's got some important business to take care of. Why would you pay a rate based on anyone else? With Allstate, you're connected to a rate based on you. Stay ahead of your moderate to severe eczema and show off clearer skin and less itch with Dupixin, the number one prescribed biologic by dermatologists and allergists that helps heal your skin from within. Serious allergic reactions can occur that can be severe. Tell your doctor about new or worsening eye problems such as eye pain or vision changes, including blurred vision, joint aches and pain, or a parasitic infection. Don't change or stop asthma medicines without talking to your doctor. Ask your eczema specialist about Dupixin. 518, Apple has released its latest software update with a new security feature that can protect your iPhone from thieves. ABC's Lionel Moise has the details in today's Tech Bytes. In today's Tech Bytes, Apple releasing its latest iPhone software update with new security features. The stolen device protection tool requires Face ID or Touch ID to perform certain actions. There is a time delay to change your passcode or Apple ID only when you're away from familiar places like home or work. TikTok is the latest tech company to cut jobs. About 60 employees are being laid off, including some workers in LA, New York, and Austin, Texas. So far this year, more than 10,000 tech jobs have been slashed according to one industry job tracker and Ford Motor Company is going big when it comes to the dashboard in one of its SUVs the panel on the 2024 Lincoln Nautilus will be as wide as the windshield a whopping 48 inches it includes apps like Spotify streaming video and auto racing games those are your tech bites have a great day won't well, distract drivers at all Mike don't worry about it it's gonna be okay <laughs> they need more distractions out there yeah <laughs> 
video. <laughs> Put you in the mood, yeah. For driving. So the passenger maybe, or the the kids in the backseat. I don't know. Well, I don't know what's going on there. Yeah, maybe you supposed to do both together. Yeah. Uh, Who knows? Well, you definitely want to pay attention to the roads this morning, guys. Obviously, there's a lot of fog. That's kind of the big story that uh, we're following right now. But uh, take a quick look here, Trans Guide, looking at US 90 there at Leon Creek. Uh, so this is the kind of the uh, the lasting effects that we've had from some of that rain that we saw yesterday. So this is the last sort of high water closure that's being reported right now by TxDOT. So we were told that the uh, westbound lanes were going to be closed for a while, but we do see traffic kind of moving through there in both directions. So that's good news. Hopefully they have cleared that out and they uh, are now allowing for our drivers to kind of get in and around this area because uh, this obviously US 90 Leon Creek, very, very busy area that a lot of people use throughout the morning. And you see here that traffic is moving through there. So we'll see if we could get that updated or just talk to Transguide here in just a little bit, get some more details there. We still have a crash being reported eastbound at Hildebrand and uh, that's going to be for our inbound traffic. So again, right before you get to Woodlawn Avenue, saw a little bit of a backup there earlier. Those The cameras in that area, though, are so foggy that it's hard to actually see what exactly is going on in that area. But last report we got from Textiles is that we do have one main lane closed uh, there if you're coming in from I-10 East. The rest of the city, things are looking pretty good right now. Again, biggest thing that we've been following throughout the morning is going to be the fog. We're going to put you back on the rotator shot here. I'm going to kind of move out of the way. You see some different shots from across the city there. I-10 at Pro and uh, let's see if we get one more here. 35 at Loop 410. See just uh, very foggy conditions out there. Uh, we're going to be talking just a little bit about some tips on how to drive in fog if you're headed out right now. Mike, feels warmer, so that. Yeah. The driving conditions not great. Uh, yeah, at least it is uh, fairly mild out there this morning. And as far as rain, uh, just want to take a look at some of these pictures. Three and a half inches out there, and that's uh, yesterday at the airport with the whole event coming in. You know, from with the rain that fell Sunday night into Monday, it was just over three and a half inches. But yesterday. From midnight, 2.41, new record for rainfall yesterday. Now, with the ground so saturated, of course, any more rain is definitely going to run off. So those low water crossings, those usual spots that flood up, it's not going to take much more to cause that. We don't have a lot in town right now, but as you can see, there is definitely more that's headed up in here. Catula, you've got some uh, pretty good showers right now. Those are heading in toward Pleasanton, Floresville, and then further up to the north. And this is where I think most of the rain is going to be later on today. There are some pretty good thunderstorms up there. As a matter of fact, a uh, severe thunderstorm warning. Now, this is well north of our area, but it is something that you know, we'll be on the lookout for a couple of storms. Again, the majority of those are going to be further up there to the north. One more look at a live camera. This is over there by uh, 10 and 410. Visibility, yeah, just down to a couple of hundred yards, if that, out at the airport. Zero visibility at Castroville, and pretty much everybody is seeing some fog this morning, and it is going to be sticking around for a while because of the dense fog advisory up until 10 o'clock. So we will have some of these showers scattered around the area, primarily the first portion of the day, and again, primarily up to the north. If you had to just go for a general location with most of the rain, we are going to make it up to 62 at noon and then top off at 65. Still a stray little shower here. Then that rain's going to pick back up. So this computer model, I think, does a really good job depicting what's going on. We've got a few showers around here this morning. It starts to pick up a little bit more. The majority of that is further up there to the north throughout the rest of the day, and then a couple of just leftover showers in the afternoon. We get that lull, then it picks back up again. And tomorrow morning, we actually could have a couple of more spots of some heavy downpours around here. And again, on the saturated ground, all it's going to do is run off and cause some minor flooding in the usual spots. This is going to be the situation throughout the morning hours tomorrow. And what's also interesting is even after a lull, it looks like we get yet another wave coming in here and tomorrow evening with some heavier rain. So through tomorrow is going to be the opportunity for more of the widespread heavier rain. Then it's just going to be a scattered shower or two on Thursday, Friday, one or two showers as this next front moves on through. It is going to be very mild Thursday, Friday, more sunshine up to 70. That front comes through here. We are setting up for a great looking weekend, just about normal temperatures, but just going to be pretty wet today as well as tomorrow, maybe a little bit on Thursday. A whole lot more after this. The Neutron movie is getting an X-Files veteran. CNN's David Daniel has that and more in today's Hollywood Minute. I love you, I love you too, man. 
Gillian Anderson is getting her Tron on. Deadline reports the Emmy and Golden Globe winning actress has joined the cast of Tron Ares. No word on Anderson's role. Oscar winner Jared Leto is set for the title role Ares, a video game character who crosses over to real life. As a species, what are we doing with our time? How are we consuming this planet? 50% of the planet's habitat is gone because of our agriculture. People don't have a connection to what food really is and where it really comes from. Feeding Tomorrow is aimed at changing that. The documentary looks at how ecosystem destruction, climate change, and other issues are damaging our food system and offers practical steps to reverse course. Feeding Tomorrow debuts today on digital platforms. An awesome update on awesome games done quick. The latest organized speed runs of video games raise more than two and a half million dollars for Prevent Cancer Foundation. Since they cranked up the telethons in 2010, the Gonzo Gamers have raised nearly 49 million dollars for various charities. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Time now is 528 and 58 degrees for now. Operation Lone Star running into some problems with the U.S. Supreme Court. Up next, how the justice's decision is already affecting the border. And San Antonio ISD made headlines last week for not being ready for cold weather. Head on GMSA at 6. Case that investigates millions of dollars put into school renovations and improvements for campuses that are now closing. Hi there, good morning. It is Tuesday the 23rd. Yes, we made it to Tuesday. Uh, we had a lot of rain uh, yesterday, but you know what? Actually, in the afternoon for a little bit, did y'all yeah, witness the sun? Yeah, really nice. I didn't yeah. see a cloud in the sky for a hot <laughs> yeah, minute there. it was did, nice. Yeah, did make it up into the uh, the low 60s yesterday, and we still have, now that didn't last long, we still have some rain out yeah. there, as you can see behind us, but the big problem this morning is a lot of the thick fog yeah. as you're heading out, so you're going to have to allow yourself extra time again, and then we also have more showers on top of that, so here is uh, one of the live cams out there. 10 at 410. Now, granted, this is on top of that building out there at 10 at 410. So down at the surface, maybe a little bit better, but this is just a good indication that, yeah, it's pretty darn soupy. We have temperatures right now, 57 degrees. Dew point is at 57, which means 100% humidity, light or no wind. You know, you get all that moisture in there, and that's why we have a lot of fog around here. Six hundredths of a mile right now, so that's basically just about 100 yards maybe. Visibility out at the airport, a third of a mile at Port S.A., zero visibility Castroville right now. Everybody has some very thick fog, and this really started early. Actually, some of the clearer skies last night didn't really help out because that allowed, you know, with all the moisture in the ground, allowed the heat to escape out into uh, into space. And then everybody in our viewing area, with the exception of LaGrange, has fog in one way, shape or another. And it will be sticking around for a while. Dense fog advisory up until 10 o'clock this morning. And like I said, we do have some rain on top of that. Now, not a lot here in San Antonio proper, but you go down to the south and here's this band of rain and all of this almost is kind of kind of training right here. Floresville down to Pleasanton and then also down in toward Catula and it's just following this line and this is going to continue throughout the morning and these got some decent downpours right here. So this will continue to work its way up to the north and of course with the ground so saturated, it's not going to take much to cause those usual spots to uh, flood over the low water crossings, uh, streams, creeks, everything else, some standing water and then we're not done even today. More on that in a second. Everybody's in the uh, mid to upper 50s, couple of low 60s right now. Mold and Mountain Cedar on the low side. Kind of surprised that mold was low yesterday. Updated counts going to be coming out later on this morning. So we've got uh, just a damp day today is the best way to put it. Some rain around here. Fog this morning, mid 60s. Rain will taper a bit later on this afternoon. Also, the majority of it is going to be further up to the north, even a few thunderstorms up there. Then rain comes back in here overnight. So we're going to have more of it and maybe some heavy downpours again in the morning tomorrow. Temperatures in the low 60s and even rain tomorrow tomorrow night. Then tapers off a bit more toward the end of the week. Maybe a shower or two around here. It is going to be warmer up to 70 both Thursday and Friday. Front comes on through here. Going to squeeze out a shower or two on Friday night and then sets us up for a great weekend. 60s and 40s, highs and lows, right where 
should be this time of year and plenty of sunshine. Nice chance to dry out this weekend. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Hitting the roads right now. Any problems out there with the fog and the rain, RJ? Yeah, Mike, you were talking about just uh, cameras on the surface. Take a look at this one here, 410 and Ingram Road. Obviously, trans guy cameras a little bit elevated there from the roadways, but you could just see headlights in the distance there. Definitely, definitely some foggy conditions out there for our drivers. We do have this crash that's still being reported on the eastbound lanes, I-10 at Hildebrand. So this is going to be for our traffic coming in Bound. We have uh, reports of one main lane closed, but uh, I was looking through some of those cameras. Again, they're, they're very foggy out there. Looks like we are getting traffic moving through that area. Uh, so I'll just kind of double check this one uh, as we move along during uh, the rest of our five o'clock hour here. Now, as far as the rest of the city, things looking pretty good for the most part. Um, you know what? We have cleared out uh, the high water alert that we had on the 90 eastbound there at uh, Leon Creek. So traffic is now moving pretty good in both directions there. So we've been talking a lot about the fog. Here's a couple of tips. Just just to kind of let you know about if you are headed out uh, within the next half hour or so. Obviously, if you have fog lights, go ahead and use those when you're driving in these conditions. Use low beam headlights and never use high beam headlights. They cause a glare, so make sure to use those low beam do not use high beam headlights. And of course, one thing that you want to do, especially when we have very, you know, few visibility, you do want to follow the lines on the roads and make sure to the biggest thing is obviously give yourself uh, more time if you have to head out and uh, obviously give yourself more space from any cars that are in front or behind you. So those are just a couple of tips. If you are headed out right now, we'll continue to follow the very latest conditions out there. Mark and Stephanie, back to you guys. Thank you, RJ. The city of Natalia, Texas marks the end of the road for a mass murder suspect who was on the run. According to local authorities, that man killed himself as law enforcement officers closed in on him. Our Katrina Weber is live at the place where the situation came to that deadly end at a travel center just off of I-35 near FM 471. Now, Katrina, we understand the suspect was wanted in Illinois. Well, that's right. Uh, we were told that he was accused of killing at least eight people there in Illinois and wounding one other. But according to the sheriff here, well, this suspect fired his gun for the last time here at the gas pumps outside this Chubby's uh, travel center late last night as he killed himself. Now, his name is 23-year-old Romeo Nance. He's the man who uh, died after a brief standoff here at Chubby's last night with members of multiple law enforcement agencies. According to the Medina County Sheriff, his agency got word around 8.30 last night that a chase was headed this way. He says he was told that Nance was wanted for multiple murders in Illinois. Now, we've learned those all happened this week in and around the city of Joliet. It seems Nance had made his way here to Natalia, and as those officers and deputies got close to him, they say he killed himself. I can tell you that the threat was, the suspect was neutralized. There's no threat to the community. different from how they were last night. Now, we understand that the Texas Rangers have taken over this part of the investigation. As far as we know at this point, uh, that suspect not accused of harming anyone here or in Texas, but uh, the authorities there in Illinois are taking over or continuing their investigation and wrapping up the cases involving the murders that happened there. Reporting live in Natalia, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Katrina, thank you. A local energy company says it's being acquired by a major gas company. New Star Energy and Sunoco have entered into an agreement for Sunoco to buy New Star for $7.3 billion. It's being reported that the board of directors for both companies have approved the purchase. The report also states Sunoco will acquire New Star in an all equity transaction, including assuming debt. Right now, the deal is expected to close sometime in the second quarter of this year. Before the deal is finalized, certain closing conditions must be met, including New Star's unit holders giving their approval, as well as the customary regulatory. A divided Supreme Court is putting added pressure on lawmakers to pass an immigration plan. The justices, by a five to four vote, have now granted an emergency appeal from the Biden administration to remove a razor wire along part of the border. CNN's Amy Kiley explains how Texas's Operation Lone Star will continue to enforce matters at the border and why federal lawmakers can't agree on a solution. 
It's not only affecting the communities here, it's affecting the people into the interior of the United States. The Supreme Court is letting Border Patrol remove razor wire along part of the Rio Grande. It's from Operation Lone Star, a Texas initiative to stop migrants from crossing into the U.S. A new report says that effort has cost about $10 billion over the past three years. Your schools everywhere in Texas need this kind of attention. Roads all through Texas need attention, our hospitals, our infrastructure. We're here under the governor's order in order to, to, uh, to protect Texas. The Biden administration is suing Texas to stop its border efforts. It argues immigration is a federal matter, so the new ruling puts more pressure on Congress to address the crisis. America's national security begins with securing and maintaining our borders. Senate negotiators are working on a border security bill. They say a sticking point is how to pay for it. Another issue is that House Republicans are pushing for Trump-era border policies. Some say they won't compromise with Senate Democrats. We're not there yet, but we'll keep going. I'm Amy Kiley reporting. New video shows the moment a massive wave slams into a U.S. military base on a remote island in the Pacific. Check this out. Service members in the Marshall Islands got quite the surprise when waves measuring several feet high crashed into the building right there, quickly flooding several rooms in the process. Some people were swept right off their feet, but luckily no one suffered serious injuries. The Army says at least a third of the base was flooded. Army officials say high wind, high tides, and an offshore storm contributed to these unusually high waves. Wow. Yeah, scary. Time now, 540 and 58 degrees for now. Driving can dirty up a car and truck easily, especially after it rains, and cleaning them offers two benefits, a nice looking car and a safer one. We'll explain next. And let's see if we can see anything out there with a live cam. No, uh, no not in this shot. Uh, very foggy out there. This picture actually tells a story. Uh, be careful when you're driving. We saw a bunch of fog on the way to work. Uh, it was kind of weird not seeing our San Antonio skyline. We'll be right back. 544, the morning commute can be a messy one with all the rain and traffic. So if your car looks like it needs a bath, 12 on your side's Marilyn Morris explains why you shouldn't wait too long. Winter driving can get messy, but your car isn't just dirty. It can also be dangerous. All the salt spray, snow and road grime that gets onto a vehicle in the winter time could obscure the radar and the cameras and the different sensors that you use for your safety systems. And while it doesn't mean that they won't work all the time, they may not be there when you most need them. So those safety sensors need a little extra attention in mucky weather. The one you probably rely on the most is this one, the backup camera. In some cars, you just tap and the self cleaner takes care of it. If not, just find the exposed lens in the rear and wash it clean. If your car has parking assist, be sure to wipe off the bumper sensors and clean the rear body panels because that's where blind spot monitoring happens. A lot of new cars have radar sensors behind the front grille, so clean that area too. If your car has forward collision or lane departure warning, pay extra attention to the windshield where the camera and sensors are usually mounted. If not clean, they may get triggered unnecessarily while you're driving. One final thing to consider, a 360 degree camera system is on some vehicles, they're usually under the mirror area. You're gonna to wanna to reach under here, make sure that these are clean, just like you did the front and rear cameras. And pay attention to your tires. When the temperatures go down, so does tire pressure. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Mike, you didn't know where your 360 cameras were under the mirrors? <laughs> Mike. Mike just had a light bulb moment. 545, 58 degrees. Let's look out there with TransGuide, uh, looking at this shot here at Highway 281 at Loop 410 and I-37 at Southeast Military in 1604. You can see it's still very foggy out there, so take caution. I don't see a whole lot of problems, but I'm gonna be checking in with RJ Marcus very soon. All right, 549 right now on your Tuesday morning, and it is all about the fog right now out in the roadways. Taking a look behind me, Loop 410 at Everett's Road. Remember, this was uh, where we were shut down yesterday because of, uh, because of high water and some standing water issues there on 410 at Evers. Now the issue here being the fog, but we are seeing traffic move through the area here again. Just take caution if you are headed out to many parts of the San Antonio area. As far as the city, things looking pretty good for the most part. We have cleared out that crash that was inbound I-10 east at, uh, at uh, West Hill 
Hildebrand Avenue, so that has been cleared out. And then earlier we still had some lingering effects from some of that rain there on 90 at, uh, at Leon Creek, so that has now been open there in both directions. So that's good news for anyone that's headed out right now. As we take a look real quick here at some outbound traffic times, inbound still things looking pretty good, so didn't want to really uh, bring that up too much. But uh, if you are headed outbound, Castroville again, if you are driving through 90, that's obviously going to be, uh, you know, maybe take you a little bit of extra time to get out to the Castroville area. We're looking at 35 minutes. And then if you were headed out to Lavernia, 28 minutes. Again, not too bad right now as far as the rest of the city and surrounding areas. So the biggest thing, again, we're going to be following throughout the morning the fog. But the good news, guys, is that there's no major crashes, no major stalled vehicles out there at the moment. But of course, as we get closer to six o'clock, how you doing, Robert? Good to see you. We do expect, uh, you know, traffic to definitely get a little bit busy out there. So just be cautious and uh, make sure you take your time out in the roadways this morning. Yeah, one of our directors, Robert Flowers, just yeah, almost had a, a cameo. Do you want to come back, Robert? Say hi. He said no. Hello. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> he's all business. Uh, he's, yeah. he's headed for the booth right now. Uh, we don't have a lot of heavy rain around the area. Like you were saying, a lot of those low water crossings have started to, you know, the water receding. But it's not going to take much to then have those things come back up since we've had, you know, widespread two, three, four inches of rain around here. So take a look. And I love this picture out there, River Road. And up near Canyon Lake and the water just running off. I drove up 281 yesterday. Almost Basin was was flooded and, you know, the usual spots. And, and we do have a lot more rain in the forecast. So just beware of those usual spots because tomorrow morning and maybe Thursday morning as well as far as some heavier downpours. But real cool looking picture. Thank you very much for that. All right, there's the, uh, there's the fog live cam. Can't see your hand in front of your face out there and visibilities haven't changed that much around the area about 100 yards out at the airport. Zero visibility heading out 90 and toward Castroville going up 10 in all direct and pretty much everywhere there is fog this morning. So just take it easy as RJ has been saying dense fog advisory up until 10 o'clock. So here's what's going on with uh, with radar right now. And even though there's not a lot of rain here in city proper, obviously we've got this batch down here to the uh, south. All this is sliding up to the northeast and uh, you know, you didn't get as much rain down here to the south Sunday night into into yesterday morning, but you're getting it today and it's kind of these showers one right after another. So around Pleasanton, around Floresville, you do want to watch it for some of the uh, the usual spots that may flood over. And then here's a pretty good batch of some moderate and even a couple of heavier downpours. Again, that is sliding in toward Pleasanton and May looks like it's going to be grazing into uh, San Antonio as well. So just got to emphasize that it's not going to take much to cause more low water crossings. Got to keep, I know I sound like a broken record with that, but I want to keep repeating that throughout the rest of the morning. Here comes some of this rain. One of the focal points, though, is going to be further up to the north today. That's where a lot of the heavy, heavy downpours are. We've already seen some strong to potentially severe storms just north of our area. So that's where the majority will be. And we'll have just kind of scattered showers. They'll become kind of fewer as the afternoon rolls on. That's not going to last forever, though, because things rev back up overnight tonight. Another one of these waves moves on in here. So we do have the potential for more heavier downpours around the area tomorrow in the morning hours for the morning commute. You know, not everybody's going to be seeing that rain, though. And then then another wave looks like it's going to be coming on through here then tomorrow night and we may have some of this leftover rain then early on Thursday morning. So here's what the forecast looks like today. We'll have a few of those showers scattered about the area this morning. Temperatures are going to be staying steady all morning long. And of course, the fog mixed in as well. And then noon 62 degrees, by the way, once again, dense fog advisory up until 10 o'clock this morning. We will top off at 65 lesser chances for some rain, but then we are going to be seeing more come on in here and we could still see over the next three days a good inch, maybe two inches of rain. The majority of this being well off there to the east. So here's what it looks like over the next seven days. 65 today, a little bit cooler tomorrow, heavier rain tomorrow morning. That's going to be the potential. Then we start to see more sunshine Thursday, Friday up to 70, a leftover shower or two front comes through here. That's going to just provide us a beautiful, beautiful weekend and a chance to uh, dry out as I can't believe I'm saying that, but a chance to dry out this weekend. A lot more after this.
Good Tuesday morning to you. Coming up here on GMA, the story that we are all following. The New Hampshire primary. Voters go to the polls this morning as former President Trump and Nikki Haley go head to head. Our team is going to break down the state of the race. Also this morning, we've got the Oscar nominations live. Find out if your favorite movie or actor or actress has made the cut. That and so much more on GMA. Ahead in our next hour, GMSA Uvalde families want answers from the acting police chief. At the time of the Robb Elementary shooting, why Mariano Pargas is in hot water after last week's DOJ report. Plus, KSAT investigates millions of dollars put into SAISD school renovations and improvements for campuses that are now closing. Where the money is going and what happens next. And up next, we're live in Natalia, where a mass murder suspect who was on the run from Illinois met the end of the road here in South Texas. And looking at fog and mist on the roads this morning could have another tricky morning commute. We'll be back. Rise and shine at 6 a.m. Let's look out there with live cam. You can see something in the shot, but a lot of fog around town, so be careful when you hit the roadways. Live from KSAT 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Yeah, I said that I think that's actually a little bit of an improvement from this last Earlier, hour. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. It is 6 a.m. on your Monday. Uh, no, Tuesday, <laughs> January 23rd. I think they do that just to see if we're paying attention or we're awake. We're awake. We yeah, caught you. We, we got, got you this time. <laughs> But yes, it's really weird, you know, coming into town, you know, we usually see the, you know, the downtown skyline and it was just missing this morning. Yes. The other thing you'll notice is the fact that it's like almost 60 degrees yeah. outside. Yeah. Very warm and obviously very, very humid out there. And you were talking about maybe a slight improvement in some spots, which may be the case, but then in a lot of spots, it is just pea soup out there. So that's going to continue throughout the rest of the morning. Here's the camera over there at 10 at 410. And again, I... Granted, this is on top of that building, so a uh, higher into the in the fog and the, the low clouds. But yeah, there's plenty of uh, reduced visibility all around the area. And the numbers, as far as these reporting areas, haven't changed that much. Maybe 100 yards out there at the airport, six hundredths of a mile, quarter mile out there at uh, Bernie Stage, zero visibility. Castroville, Pleasanton's actually dropped down a little bit. And you can see the entire metropolitan area is under very, very thick fog as of right now. And along with that fog, obviously some mist, so the roads are damp all around around and pretty much everybody has fog right now all around the extreme there the ex entire should say southern portion of the state dense fog advisory kind of surprised why our western counties aren't included in this but obviously you're seeing some fog there but this is in effect up until 10 o'clock this morning and then of course we do have not only just the mist with the fog but also some showers we haven't seen now nothing like what we had sunday night into yesterday morning Although there are some pretty good downpours right here that are moving primarily to the northeast. So Floresville, Pleasanton, uh, Catula, Gonzalez, you've been getting some steady rain in the overnight hours and more is kind of following this track right here. And since the ground is so saturated, it's not going to take a lot to cause more in the usual spots, the low water crossings to, uh, to flood over. So just be aware of that mid upper 50s, low 60s all around the area. The normal low is 41, so just do the math. We're way above, obviously, where we should be. Mold is on the low side from yesterday's count. So is Mountain Cedar. The updated reading is going to come out later on this morning. Temperatures aren't going to go anywhere this morning. We'll have some of those showers around here. Plenty of fog, of course. And then the rain's going to begin to sort of taper off throughout a majority of the area, and most of it's going to be focused well up to the north. We'll be up to 62 at noon and then top off at 65. And again, Again, lesser rain around here, but it's going to be picking up overnight with another wave coming on through. So going to be a wet morning again tomorrow. More on that coming up and look ahead to the weekend. RJ, what's going on on the roads right now? All right, Mike, we've been talking about a lot about the fog so far. Obviously, that's going to be a concern for drivers right now. But as I was kind of looking through the maps, I noticed that there was a backup there in the downtown area, just trying to figure out what exactly was going on there. So just got off the phone trans guide and they basically said that they are still working on some drainage, uh, some drainage work in that area right now. So they have shut down the lower level of 35. What you're looking at behind me is the camera stretching 
reaching all the way back to Alamo as we're going to take a look here in our maps and you can see that uh, they have right now shut down the 35 parts on the lower level there all the way from uh, South Alamo Paso to Cesar Chavez all the way up to San Pedro uh, Avenue. So again, it's going to be right there at the I-10 at the Y that we're going to see a shutdown and again, it's going to be all the way from Marin to San Pedro and actually stretching now to uh, St. Mary's as well. Our director just, just in my ear and mentioned that uh, that was still kind of closed at the moment as well. So again, kind of an ongoing issue there, lingering effects from yesterday's rain, but we are not seeing any sort of high water closures that we had been seeing over the past 24 hours. It looks like crews are still out there working on some drainage issues in that area. The rest of the city, things looking pretty good. Again, we had a crash earlier, I-10 eastbound at uh, West Hildebrand. That has been cleared out. And, and again, no other major issues because of the uh, high water that we saw over the past day or so. Biggest thing we're following right now is this in downtown, a couple of those construction closures and also the fog in the area. Looking at 281, Loop 410, we have uh, traffic moving pretty good in all these directions, but again, uh, low visibility in many parts of the city. Mark and Stephanie, back to you guys. Thank you, sir. People in the city of Natalia are waking up to news that a suspected mass murderer was among them. That man who was on the run from authorities in Illinois apparently took his own life here in Texas. Our Katrina Weber is live where it all went down outside Chubby's Travel Center near I-35 and FM-471. Katrina, what are people saying out there this morning? Well, they're definitely surprised, but so far it's been only after I told them what happened. Now, this is a truck stop, a lot of uh, transient people, but even the ones who are local told me that they had not heard the news. Chances are this will be the talk of the town later on today, though, how 23-year-old Romeo Nance ended up in this city. Now, according to authorities in Illinois, he was the suspect in the murders of at least eight people this week in and around the city of Joliet. One other person there was shot and wounded. Multiple agencies have been looking for Nance. With the help of the U.S. Marshal Service, they tracked him here to Texas. We understand there was a bit of a chase with a brief standoff outside Chubby's after 8.30 last night. Then the local sheriff here in Medina County told us later that Nance had killed himself. But we do expect to learn more details about this case later on today. So far, as far as we know, uh, no one here was harmed by him. But authorities there in Illinois will be handling the murders that happened there. Reporting live in Natalia, Katrina Weber, Case at 12 News. Katrina, thank you. Emotions were running high at the Uvalde County Commissioner's Court meeting Monday as survivors and families of the Robb Elementary victims demanded accountability. Mariano Vargas was acting police chief that day and is now a Uvalde County Commissioner. Last week, a Department of Justice report pointed a finger at Vargas and his lack of action the day of the shooting. Families tell our Lee Waldman they want Vargas to face them. Why didn't you save us when we called 911? We survive, now we fight. Survivors from classroom 112 holding up signs, calling out Uvalde County Commissioner Mariano Pargas. Though his chair was vacant Monday, that didn't stop the criticism from the families. That just shows what person he is. Careless, irresponsible, and it shows to the whole world. If he failed us on the 24th, He's going to continue failing. The third floor room of the Uvalde County Courthouse left with standing room only as speakers address the commissioners and Pargas's empty seat, asking for him to be removed and off county payroll. We're paying a man that did nothing. My daughter sat there for 77 minutes. And then she would make phone calls begging for help. I talked with County Judge Bill Mitchell, who says unless Pargas steps down himself, there's not much the court can do. He says that removal process is all laid out in a government statute. Any elected official has to be removed by action of the district court. Commissioner's court has no authority whatsoever. We spoke with Pargas at a commissioner's court meeting in December of 2022. All I can say is that a lot of stuff been put out there is not the way it happened. That's all I can tell you. Pargas said that a month after CNN first reported the acting Uvalde police chief was told by dispatch. A child in the classroom called saying, quote, eight to nine are still alive. Are we just waiting for more time or what's going on? And they're going to come in. DPS Ranger, how's somebody in there come in? Now that this review of the failed law enforcement response is out and Pargas is called out by name, these families are hoping he'll step down. He doesn't care about the community, he just cares for himself. I mean, he's a disappointment and he should step down. And Uvalde, Lee Waldman, KSAT 
12 News. Well, back here in San Antonio, the Police Officers Association is once again calling out the Bear County DA's office and DA Joe Gonzalez, this time for the way former officers are treated in court. SAPOA is asking for equal treatment for former police officers who are on trial. The police union referring to recent mistrials in cases involving former SAPD officers. The office of SAPOA President Danny Diaz released a statement yesterday calling out the DA saying in part, quote, from withholding crucial evidence to expert witness testimonies, these unlawful practices reflect a clear bias against San Antonio police officers who have been awaiting a fair trial for over a year, end quote. The office of Joe Gonzalez responded to our request for comment saying, quote, our ultimate goal is to seek justice. It is critical that our office give opposing counsel all the information they are entitled to. When, for whatever reason, that does not happen, we will disclose the error, end quote. We'll be staying on top of this developing story as it unfolds. We also expect to hear directly from the police union president later today. First votes were cast overnight in the New Hampshire primary. It was not good news for former President Trump. He was swept by Nikki Haley, six votes to zero in tiny Dixville Notch, New Hampshire, which continued its tradition of casting votes at midnight. However, as ABC's Melissa Don reports, the polls might not be a reliable indicator of how things will play out later today across the Granite State. Midnight voting in Dixville Notch, New Hampshire, kicking off the first in the nation primary. The town following tradition and all six voters picking former South Carolina Governor Nikki Haley as their Republican presidential nominee. Haley spent yesterday crisscrossing New Hampshire trying to convince voters to deliver her an upset victory. We can't be a country in disarray and have a world on fire and go through four more years of chaos because we won't survive it. Former President Trump's former rivals in the Republican primary have officially thrown their support behind him. Trump on stage last night, repeatedly interrupted by protesters. I was also honored. <laughs> She's back. As the She's former back. president accused Nikki Haley of courting Democrats, calling her unelectable. So if you want a losing candidate who puts America last vote for Nikki Haley. It's an uphill battle for Haley. Polls show her trailing by double digits. I love her, okay? She, she has a, the new, new style of what we need down in Washington, D.C. If they don't like him, I like him. So uh, I think he'll help out the country. Meanwhile, the New Hampshire Attorney General's office says it's investigating reports of an apparent robocall that used artificial intelligence to mimic President Biden, advising people in the state not to vote in the primary. The White House says the call was not recorded by the president. Today, Biden, Vice President Harris and their spouses are set to hold a rally together in Virginia to discuss abortion access. The primary in South Carolina, that's Haley's home state, is next month, but polls there already show Trump leading by more than 30 points. Melissa Adon, ABC News, Manchester, New Hampshire. Time now, 612 and 58 degrees right now. After this break, Spurs wrapped up their five-game road trip in Philly on ended up on the wrong side of history last night. We've got the highlights next. Let's look out there with live cam. If you haven't stepped outside yet, be prepared for that fog, especially when you're on the road. We're going to be checking in with Mike to see when that will kind of go away and when we can expect to see more rain.